Hey everybody, this is Al with El Rey Collection bringing you some epic cardboard today of one of Barcelona's all-time greats, Paulino Alcantara. Uh, it may not be a name that everybody knows, but uh, you know, if he's probably most famous for holding the record of most goals for Barca of uh, prior to to Messi breaking his record. Now, the uh, a little bit of an issue here because he played in the amateur to you know professional range, so he kind of you kind of mix some friendlies in with official games. So he has a little bit of kind of the Pele phenomena that I'd say here, how many goals is the right amount of goals. But in general, you know, I think he had 360, 370 goals in like 350 games. So he was a goal scoring machine. He scored about a goal a game, which obviously is an is epic performance. And uh, his cards are some of my favorite to collect. Um, he's certainly an interesting historical character, probably being the best Asian player that has ever uh, played the game of, of football at top flight level because he's from the Philippines, Philippines ancestry. He's also incredibly unique because while he started off young, still holds the record for the youngest goal, uh, the youngest player to score in a Barca game uh, at 15 years old. He, he then went back to the Philippines when his parents went back there because he was still a kid. And he was there for a couple years and helped the Philippines, some Philippine teams win some championships. But he really wanted to go back to Barcelona, which he ultimately did accomplish. I think there's the story that he refused to take the medicine, the malaria medicine when he got um, when he got ill kind of as a protest because he really wanted to go back to Barcelona. And Barcelona had won uh, the Catalonia championships in like, I think, 1915 and 16. And then they... They had two years of not winning anything without Alcantara. So when he came back um, in, what, 1919 or 1920, they started to win again. Um, and in total, he won, uh, uh, he with Barcelona, Jack Greenwell, who was a player, and then later um, the coach, Jose Sametier, uh, Ricardo Zamora, won 10 Catalunya championships, five Copa del Reyes. Um, so just an amazing, epic player of, of in very important historical um, things. He also actually became a doctor. So this just gives you some idea of who this guy was. Just an, incre uh, an incredible athlete, but also a very smart um, young man, which kind of begs the question why he kind of gets into bed with the fascists in the 1930s. But we'll leave that kind of behind and just focus mostly on, on the soccer um, because his cards, you know, as a Barcelona fan, as the history of what he was able to achieve, I think are some of the best ones. And the 1920 Spanish cards in general are some of the most beautiful, amazing cards out there. So let's start. This isn't the first card, but I think it's one of my favorite cards of him. And this this one here is is just just beautiful art. I mean, look look at just the 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 lithography on this card. And this particular card has a couple different versions. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the nuances of Spanish cards. So you'll see here, you see this, uh, SGC is going to call this Chocolates Tarant, right? And that's because on the back of the card, you see, obviously, the very clear uh, announcement for Chocolates Tarant. So here's another card of the exact same picture right and you'll see here this one calls la confianza chocolate is la confianza and if you look at the back you'll see this confianza ad so really what these cards and many many of the almost the vast majority of spanish sets from the 1920s actually come from a standard set and then those sets are printed for individual Chocolaterias, you know, places that sell chocolate, right? So you'll have, and and this is where the grading companies really are all over the place on this. So so typically what you'd want to call them is the name of the set with the back having a very specialized back for that particular, um, you know, company that was distributing the cards. But many times they'll just take whoever's on the back. So it's kind of hard to keep track of the graded populations, but it makes collecting these absolutely amazing because these backs are just beautiful. Look at this. I mean, it's, it's just insane. And in this particular issue, you'll have the one that we just saw, which was more like a photograph. And then here's a complete drawing 
So, you know, you get this Alcantara card. I prefer the photograph, the colored photograph one, but this is also just beautiful. And then again, you're going to see a different back. Now, some of these Spanish cards, you'll also see a white spot in the middle where they were never actually, um, they were never actually stamped by the company. So it's the original, um, you know, the, just the original impression without a stamp. So look at this one here is Avarcito uh, Juncosa, right? So these these absolutely are just drop dead gorgeous cards from from the 1920s. So you know, some people sometimes ask me, and and these 1920s cards are actually kind of hard to date. A lot of them are from 1920, 22, 23, 24. Some of them are just kind of still unknown. There are some good guesses out there, some some books and, and internet stuff. People generally ask me, what's the first card that he appeared on? And and here's a 19, you know, 14, 15 team card for Barcelona. Let me see if I can get you there. And, and you'll see Alcantara standing right here on this card. So, you know, this, this, is, again, these backs, these aren't like blank backs. This is another chocolate. The vast majority of these cards are chalk come from chocolate manufacturers. And here you can see Alcantara's name right there. So, um, look at awesome stuff. You're going to, you can find a lot of these cards on Toll Collection. Um, very diverse pieces of art, you know, with drawings. Some of many, many have drawings. Some have, um, you know, photographs. A lot of them have scenes from games where they document who won the specific tournament. This one, you can see this back. This is a Eduardo P back. So, you know, you just, when, when you, when you look at these, I think I showed one of these on my Zamora, uh, video as well, but here's just a nice little, um, wrapper for, for Carmel's. You know, this, this actually is one of the few that, are, that are blank. You have some that, you know, kind of look like they were parts of sets that ultimately could, could be included in, in playing card decks. Here's, um, here's Alcantara. And then, you know, they, they show him with some of the cups that he won again, 10 Catalonian cups, five, uh, Copa del Reyes. Look at these backs. These are just amazing. I mean, for... For, for many, you just have to hold these, and you, I, I'm going to tell you, you're just going to fall in love with this. This is probably one of my most favorite cards of all time. Like, I'm saying broadly in my entire collection. it's This is how much I love this card. And you may say, what's the big deal about it? Well, not only is it is it just a beautiful, for me, aesthetic, a very common pose of Alcantara here, but this is actually a punch-out card. So take a look. You can see how this was intended to be punched out of the of the card and and then displayed as like you'd fold back, you know, the cardboard and you display and you see Alcantara, you know, striking the ball. To me, the fact that this thing survived, you know, basically a hundred years in this condition, nice corners non-punched i just can't fathom the kid that didn't punch this and then how it got saved through all these years i i i this is it's like beyond me and i'm super thankful that it that it arrived to me in this condition and and i just find these these things amazing pretty much all the trocoletas things which were punch out meant to be you know cards that were meant to be um you know kind of like stand st stood up you know, those, those things are just amazing to me. But check out some of these other in-action ones. There's a bunch of in-action ones. This is a, a, a Chocolates Guillen. He, and here's, here's Alcantara over here. But just look at the borders of these cards. Absolutely, insanely beautiful. This golden, here's the back. The, the, these golden, uh, you know, age designs, uh, photography, gilding there's some they have some some gold guild uh in them as well it's just for those of you who, who i have a huge partiality to barcelona having lived there um you know studied there I, I love the architecture of antonio gaudi and and you know you these cars just feel like that uh architecture in some bizarre cultural way so you know th this is just all of these cards are amazing 
you know you can find a bunch of them on on Tolo Collection. Um, the backs on these, I'm a big back guy. I know that not a lot of people focus on the backs, but these are some of the more beautiful backs you'll ever see. Here's a Chocolates Orthi. This is one's a little bit later uh, in his career, I think towards the end. And then he 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 uh, basically goes off to be a doctor at like 31. You know, so he he definitely wasn't done. But you know, here you go, just amazing. Amazing player, you know, and here to, to big piggyback on my last video is a nice trade card with Alcantara here and uh, Ricardo Samora uh, to his right. I mean, because, yeah, just these cards. Oh, so nice. Uh, so here's here's one when I was talking to you a little bit about some some gold uh, guilting. You can't totally appreciate this here, but this one you've got all these players here in the corner in the corners. Uh, in this this tournament and then you've got you know Alcantara heading the ball there one other small thing that I'd like to notice and, and you can um, some people may like this and some people may not so a, a number of collectors even in the in the states um, you know were when these these were like old-time collectors they would take their cards and they would stamp them so they would know they were in their collection so one of the things that you'll find is that there are a number of of Spanish cards that have a stamp of, of an owner. And you'll actually see a number of these stamps come up over and over. Of course, that's going to decimate the grade because it's not really intended. But here, here you can see one of these stamps from one of these collectors that, that held the card um, prior to us. So you'll see that in stamps. Some of them are actually quite elaborate stamps that they had made and they'd stamp the back. And, and some people I think really like that because it's like, you know, something that they, that they had, you know, th this, you'll get bad grades on them, right? This is an A. So it's like, it's the equivalent of a mark. To me, it's not like somebody writing on the back of the card. It's actually part of the collecting history of it. So, you know, if you don't like it, stay away from those, but you'll see a bunch of, a bunch of those out there if, if you're interested in it doesn't completely bother me, um, and I normally don't like writing on cards. So here's a, another great example of a portrait, and you start to see different sizes of this. This is a, a Pira and Brugueras, right? You can see the chocolate stains on them. Again, just adds to the character of these cards, if you ask me. Here's, you see the size, same image, but it's a different cut of the image, and it's, it's longer. Uh, barely fits in this SGC slab, but I'm so happy that it does, because I love these the standard one and this was one called san fernando right chocolate de san fernando so pretty much all these chocolate places ultimately go out of business but um they left us some excellent excellent things to collect here's some of these uh this is from the uh what is it escenas interesantes set and here you see these action ones don't have the video set up so well to see some of these action ones but um, and then here's a, here's an example, as I was telling you earlier, of no stamp. So this one was manufactured, intended to be sold to a, a chocolate company, and didn't get it or just never got stamped. Here's another one of like this classic. You'll see him in these classic moves, right? And this is also from the Asenas. Interesantes, and then we'll get, hey, I like this one. Eat chocolate, get smart. Chocolate smart. Love it. Who doesn't like that, right? So I won't bore you with uh, all of the ones that he's in, but, you know, there's definitely a bunch of these, um, you know, interesting scenes, sporting scenes, type sets. Uh, he also shows up on, you know, a number of these types of uh, things where have multiple player cards. Right, so you'll see him there with the back. I like this. Chocolates, bombones, y caramelos, right? You gotta like that. Talk about a sugar high. Chocolate, bombones, or uh, marshmallows, and then caramels, right? And then, you know, just back to some of these scenes. This is a little bit different look at them, but look at that header. He's an ace of football here. Really good. And this is, um, you know, just to see all the diverse types of names out, out there. Try to just... You know, get all these different types of chocolate companies. Chocolates, real cord. I mean, so so the diversity you can get, you can get many of the same sets with different backs. You can, there's so many sets out there. They're all still, I'd, I'd call, relatively 
um, inexpensive. Here's another one with Alcantara. Um, you know, certainly in comparison to a, a for a hundred year card, right? Here, this is Chocolates Sultana, right? They all have their dress. Most of these come uh, from from Barcelona. So you know, you, you'll normally get, um, you know, for a hundred dollars, you can get a really nice. Alcantara card, I would say in general, maybe 50 euros, 40 euros, maybe a couple hundred for some of the more rare ones. But, you know, for me, Alcantara is just one of those guys as a Barcelona fan and as a, a football soccer fan. I think that he's very underappreciated for what he accomplished. Um, he is, I still think by most accounts, the most successful um, Asian football player and i think that should count for something as well um and he has a very interesting life story between being the youngest still the youngest score we're all excited about uh fati but you know who who he scored three years before fati did right so you know he was i know it was a different time but it's still impressive that it's held that long um you know his records are are impressive he became a doctor just super interesting character at least one that I find super interesting. I hope you have found it interesting too, and I hope you liked this video, and I hope that you'll subscribe, so you can subscribe right down there and smash that like button, and uh, please please let me know what other things you want to hear. Hope you've enjoyed Paulino Alcantara and his epic cardboard.